it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 14 of my 3D printed Geiger Alien Xenomorph suit. So last time we worked on putting the tail together and mounting it onto the back of the suit, which I've got just here. So there's the entire tail, which I've now stuck together, which is made of lots of 3D printed sections um, mounted on foam pipe lagging. So the aim is that uh, we've mounted this on the back of the suit and the aim is to make this sort of semi-animatronic. So there's the mounting for the back and I left these holes here for the dorsal tubes. So today we're going to try and string this tail up and work out how it's going to move when I move. So my tail will be fitted about there and I've got these hubs here which were to string strings that come around and pull each side of the tail um, and then go down my leg. And the plan was that when I put my right leg back, the tail comes around this way. And several people have commented that's not the right way to do it, and it should go the other way to help you balance. But in fact, what I want to do is when I turn towards people for photo shoots, the tail also comes around towards them. So obviously I'm not actually using the tail for balance at all, I'm just using it for effect. So um, we need to stick this back on the mannequin. And then we need to work out how this stringing is going to work. And we've also got another string that's going to run all the way down the tail to bring the um, back of the tail up slightly so it's not just dragging on the ground. But actually that's fairly okay to walk around with. Obviously you can't walk backwards. You have to go in a circle. Um, I'm probably going to eventually 3D print some nylon pads for the bottom of that tail so that where it drags on concrete and stuff it doesn't get totally trashed. So let's put this back on the dummy and have a look at that stringing. Right, here it is. So there's the whole tail attached to the mannequin. We've got these back um, features, which obviously the dagger sections that continue up the tail, which will continue all the way onto the back tongue piece at the top. So um, all of those have got a hole in and we're gonna use um, some nylon 3D printer filament, which is extremely tough stuff, three mil, it's much tougher than ABS, it's practically impossible to break even if you bend it backwards and forwards loads. So we're going to use that for our strings. So that's going to hold the tip of the tail up um, as best we can, at least a little bit, and give that some tension. So um, the other thing we're going to use is some of this, which is Teflon tubing or PTFE. And we're going to thread that down the sides where I've left holes all the way and over the hubs on the hips. And we're also going to put 3D printer filament, the nylon stuff, in the middle of that. <clears throat> so that it runs more consistently. So basically this will run up over the hips and down the legs and all the way down the tail, um, at least halfway. And then it's the bottom section that's going to move either way uh, based on which side gets pulled by the nylon filament inside the PTFE. So that basically is gonna help slip the uh, printer filament down the top half of the tail. Uh, both of these materials are very slippery, which is good for this sort of thing. So obviously Teflon is very slippery and the nylon printer filament rides in this incredibly well. Um, in itself it's quite hard to grip which is um, useful for this but also a challenge for anchoring the ends. So even if you bend this backwards and forwards loads it won't break, it's very tough um, but it's very hard to clamp anything to because it just slips out. So we need to make an innovative clamp to go on the ends of these. So let's have a look at how we're going to do that. So here's some 3D printed items. I've got one hub here which um, is to go into that hole on the hip pod, so we'll go that way up and that um, basically is going to take that Teflon tube over and I've got a cable tie installed there so I can just keep it in place. Um, it's not going to actually grip the Teflon, it's not tight enough and even if it were um, it would stop the um, nylon filament moving within it and also Teflon's really slippery so it wouldn't work anyway so that's just really as a guide. Um, to grip the end of the nylon printer filament, so let's have a closer look at that. So I've got a piece there that I've bent consistently back and forwards and it won't break um, and as I said it's really slippery. So what we need to do is um, make a clamp essentially to hold that. Um, the only way I've come up with doing it is with these things which are printed in two halves and I've got one here that's assembled so it's got two screws in and two holes. Um, and it looks like if I thread the um, filament through and bend it over and bring that back through the other hole, like so, then that actually does grip really well. So the um, stuff's so tough it won't unfold and pull through and it won't break. So um, if I thought about this, I'd have built those into the tail sections where I need to grip it. Um, I could redesign these so they're a bit more stylized. 
But for now, those are gonna be my end stoppers. And I need to print some more of all of those things, including another one of these. So I don't know if you can see it, but I threaded through that nylon filament all the way up the tail and that those white pieces are the start of the Teflon tube so it goes through holes in all the pieces all the way to the top where it's just hanging out at the moment and it's going to be anchored to that top part of the back um, obviously the Teflon tubes currently poke out of there and they run all the way down the pipe lagging to the section where it turns into one piece so let me just zoom out and I'll just pull that uh, just pull that piece of nylon filament and hopefully you can see some movement in the tail there and we're going to string that in one fixed place At the moment obviously the tail falls over but when we've got the other cords down the side then um, that'll help hold it in the middle or in whichever position it is that it gets pulled so going back to have a look at the teflon pieces um, I need to make an end cap so these don't slip through so they only go up to this section which is the one where we join from two to one piece of pipe lagging and I've got that adapter piece so he's gonna, we're going to see white here unfortunately um, I could make a cover for it of course in black um, but we just need to make a little end cap there that only this can't fit through but the nylon filament can that's going to be threaded there and then the nylon filament continues down to the point of the tail to move this either side as my legs move so I thought I'd show you the CAD for these. These are the clamp pieces for the nylon 3D printer filament, obviously with the two channels and the two screw holes. And I've made the bottom screw holes slightly smaller so those screws screw straight into the plastic and um, fit neatly through the ones in the top. This is my hub piece that takes that tube over the hips and it's got that channel in there for the cable tie to go through and obviously the knob on the top there to help it adhere to the plate that I've already made. And here are my stoppers for the Teflon tube, which get acetone welded onto that tail section. They're made in kind of a cone shape, and inside is another cone shape, which means that the Teflon tube will home properly in there. And that means that the nylon 3D printer filament will glide properly through that hole, which is um, a 4mm hole for a 3mm filament, and it won't rub on the side of the ABS and wear out. I have all those parts attached now, so I've got my extra printer filament down the sides there and those couple of pieces holding it on so now if I pull the cords at the other end which are sticking out we should be able to move that tail around it's a rather manual process at the moment but it works pretty well so it should be pretty good as I'm walking along and it's just flicking side to side as I'm going and I also need to tension the piece up the back there just to hold the point of that tail up very slightly but I need to do that when I've got something to attach the other ends to. So here's my hub here, which holds the um, Teflon tube. I'm probably gonna put that Teflon tube in a piece of conduit so it looks like a continuation of the tail and doesn't just look like a white tube poking out. But essentially that comes around and then goes down the leg. However, it's not really far enough forward because um, obviously that's just gonna pull to the back of the leg and it won't have any effect on um, actually pulling the cable that's sticking out of the end. And I think that that cable sticking out of the end is going to be attached to the feet, in fact. So it's going to go around another hub on the knee as well. So what I actually need is another hub further round as part of the kind of cod plate section and the lower abdominals, um, which I haven't quite got. So it takes it about like that. And then there's actually some tension pulling that cord down the leg. So that piece isn't going to get designed until I do the front of the suit. And then, of course, I'm hoping to have about six inch lifters, so little stilts to make me a bit taller, which the other end of this will hook into when I'm wearing them. So for now, we can't do any more on that tail, but we can look at some other parts of the back. The next piece I'm gonna make is the dorsal tubes. So those are the pieces that mount in these square holes, which are those four long tubes that are very characteristic of Alien. So let's have a look at some CAD for that. My plan for the dorsal tubes is to make these bases which are round and um, so I've got one which has got this square section on on the left and that fits into the square holes that I made in the back plate which hold all four of them and point them in different directions if you remember we built, bent that plate with heat um, so they point in different directions um, and then there's another plate which is the one on the right which is shown the correct way up 
um, which holds the actual tube. Now I've got these holes, um, some slots and holes in these things, and that's so I can essentially bungee them together. So that means they're detachable and the bungee will then hook over and hold the two plates flat together. And that also means if I happen to hit one of those tubes on a doorway or something as I'm going around, it doesn't just snap off. And it also means they're easy for transport. So basically they're just held on with the tension of that bungee cord. And then the other part here is a two-part piece, which is for the actual contour of that dorsal tube. The plan is to print these out, stick them all on, and then we'll size some rings, essentially, or at least some other discs with square holes in, which will slot on those all the way down, getting progressively smaller. And that's going to make the structure. So I've decided to leave out any animatronics on these parts. Although it would be possible with another hinge part, maybe halfway up on a servo. But for now, I think I've got enough features of the suit, and I'd really just like to flesh out the contours. So here they are, I've stuck the two pieces together and mounted them on the base and I've got the piece here which is the part for the elastic to go through so that acetone welds onto the piece and they will hopefully sit flat um, but that way up. So I've got those holes in and a little notch in the piece here so that I can sort of stretch some elastic through, maybe some ninja flex, I'm not sure, something with a toggle that holds it in place. So if it hits something when I'm walking along kind of rebounds on the elastic and doesn't break. And you'll notice one of these has got a bunch of um, discs on it. So this is uh, what they're almost going to look like. I think I need some other features, but I've basically put these um, discs down. They get smaller and smaller to make the main shape for the dorsal tube. So it's quite a lot of printing. They don't fit on one bed, unfortunately. So it takes several hours to produce one on two printers. And I've still got another three to go. The TAS4 has just finished producing sections 1 to 9 out of 20 and that print took... Ah, we can't quite see it. Oh, there we go. About two and a half hours to do those nine. And the TAS3 is still busily working away doing sections 10 through 20. And so far that's been running for an hour and a half. So that's the second set. And I had to do that again twice. So I've got all of these complete now. It took me a while to print and mount all of those pieces, all the pieces that acetone welded on. So I've got all four of them. And on this one I've been experimenting with putting some features on the side. So what, what we should have is actually a plain um, tube with just the um, kind of ridges showing through a window and a strip down the other side. So what I decided to do was, um, rather than trying to skin it or anything, is just to um, put that feature on, which is just a ring I printed, and I printed it flat on the bed, and then I heated it up with a hot air gun and just bent it to the contour of the tube. So I've got the other three to do, making sure I've got the other one on the outside and so on, and then we can get these mounted. I've got the base plates welded on there with acetone to the plate that I made last time, and hopefully you can just see in the middle there is a piece of bungee cord just tied through the holes. So in order to attach the dorsal tubes, all I need to do is pop the bottom slot into the bungee and then rotate that round till it pops in and then it's attached fairly well. So those are a bit wobbly and they're going to wobble as I walk. Some of them are tighter than others, so I just need to pull those bungee cords up from the back. And there is a hole, of course, all the way through, so I can tighten those. But it does mean if I hit them on a person or a doorway or something like that, hopefully, they won't snap off. And I won't have to stoop around trying to pick them up and collecting the pieces as I go. So they should be fairly resilient and obviously removable for transport. That is all I'm going to do on this episode. I would work my way up and do the big licky tongue piece that's on there, but I really want to sort out the back of the head, and I'm feeling a bit weird about these white things which might get removed. So in the next episode, I'm actually going to try and finish the main head structure. Um, this points up a lot more than it does when I wear it as well. So I want to make sure that back tongue thing doesn't collide with the back of the head and um, it's possible to move around without lots of things hitting each other. Um, and then we should be, you know, getting most of the main structure there and we can just go back and detail it up. Then after that I'm going to work my way down and try and work on the abs and the cod plate and some of the legs. 
So I've got something that's pretty much wearable without these cords hanging out and the tail swishes as I walk. So hopefully that'll happen within the next couple of parts. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on this project and other projects. There's quite a lot going on, including my 3D printed R2-D2 and my Iron Man Age of Ultron inspired Hulkbuster build.